In this exercise, you are going to download and open a flip chart, and it's going to look exactly like the one that you see in front of you in this video. A flip chart is a presentation that was created with a piece of software called Active Inspire. And Active Inspire is a lot like PowerPoint. Um, it is a software that creates presentations or lessons. And these lessons are really um, tailored to work very well on an active board. I kind of think of it as like PowerPoint on steroids. Um, so you're going to see this exact same presentation when you open it. And the ultimate goal for you is just to manipulate this flip chart to get used to what it feels like to be up at an active board. But let's talk a little bit about the layout of the software when you open up this flip chart. First of all, over here on this side, you're going to see something called the page browsers. I'm wiggling it a little bit by clicking and dragging on the, um, the top or the header of it. This is called the browser window. If you do not see it, it's because it doesn't have to be out all the time. So you notice there's a little X in the upper left hand corner of it. If I click on that, that closes the browser. If you don't see the browser window, you can get it back very easily by going up to the view menu and dragging down to browsers. Now what I like to do, I'm on a Mac, is I would encourage you to get used to the keyboard shortcut, which is Command B. If I hit Command B, my browser window goes away. If I hit Command B again, my browser window comes back. So you might want to just get used to um, um, getting that in your brain or kind of getting it to be habitual because that's an important part of the software is this browser window. Um, also notice that if I take my cursor and if I hover over the border of the browser window I can when I get this cursor to change to that kind of an arrow I can click and drag and you can make it bigger I mean wider or more narrow so I could um, make this a very narrow window. We're going to talk about this browser window um, later, but there are actually seven different parts to it. Um, there's seven icons at the top, and we'll study them individually, why they're important. But um, for the, um, the very beginning, I just want you to notice that you have a page browser, and when you click on that, you get a thumbnail of all the pages in the lesson. Um, and you can scroll up and down and see just a little bit about each of them. A couple other things that you need to know here. Um, first of all, if this is a zoom in, zoom out um, menu, and it's useful, um, but most of the time you're going to want you to be on best fit or fit to width. Um, because that is going to orient the page that was designed in a way that I think is most likely to um, work for most people. So just know that this is a zoom out, zoom in window. You click on it. If you're having trouble or if things seem to be off center, go to best fit and things will get reoriented for you. The other thing I want you to notice is right up here, there's this X. Um, this is what you click on if you wanna go into full screen mode. And this kind of tweaks people out a little bit, so you need to know about it because when I click on it, watch my menus. These are my menus right here. You're kind of used to these menus because you get menus in every software that you work in. But watch what happens to the menus when I click on this X and go into full screen mode. If I click on it, the menus actually go away. And, um, and that sometimes sort of throws people off because if they wanted to quit the program, they're going to look for the file menu and it's not there. Well, um, if you want to get out of full screen mode, you click on the very same thing that you clicked on to get into full screen mode. The purpose of it is just to have more real estate so that you, the software fills your entire screen. But again, it does kind of mess with people a little bit because the menus disappear and people wonder where they are. So you need to know that if, you're, if you've missed your menus, you probably got yourself into full screen mode. This is called your main toolbox over here. And the one thing I want to let you know about that at the very onset is that that can be customized. 
So if you're a kindergarten teacher or a special education teacher in the elementary, you may not want to have all these tools on the toolbar. It might be a distraction, it might clutter. Um, you don't need to have all of these there. And the other thing is, is that you can actually have two different toolbars. So you might want to have a toolbar with a bunch of tools on it for when you are designing your flip charts. And then you might want to have a very simple toolbar for when you're teaching your lessons. And the, that's customizable and you can flip back and forth from one toolbar to the next. Notice that this little um, tool up here called Switch Profile, if I click on it, I have several different toolbars, or they're called actually profiles. And um, these are the default ones. But if you wanted to have an at the board profile and an authoring profile, they could be very different. The authoring one might be when you're um, making flip charts and you want more tools. At the board could be very simple. I'm not going to show you how to do that right now. It's just it's important to know. Okay, we're going to cruise through a couple of these slides. And um, because I talked about them in a previous lesson, and so if you were teaching, you could go from one page to the next by clicking in the page browser. But you also could go from one page to the next um, by clicking on the next page icon in your main toolbox. So we'll stop just briefly on this slide. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between um, PowerPoint and Active Inspire, the two pieces of software, or a screen that you pull down from the ceiling, and an Active Board. An Active Board is really, um, I kind of think of it as a giant computer. And you can bring up a number of either a, a presentation that you've designed or a website that is interactive. And this is a surface that is designed to really get students more involved in the lesson. Um, whereas with a PowerPoint presentation, it's a very linear experience and there's not a whole lot of room for students to come up and touch and feel and manipulate. That's the advantage or the strength of an active board. Now, um, on this page, I did mention a couple of these things, so this is just a reminder to you. The other thing I guess I forgot to tell you about the toolbar is that if the toolbar is in your way, um, you do have the ability to customize it. So I can talk about these three icons at the top of the toolbar. This little one with that looks like a triangle curls the toolbar up. So it's one way to get the toolbar sort of out of your way. The other one is a push pin. Um, you can see that my push pin right now is yellow. That means that my push pin, just like a physical push pin, is pushed in. And that means that that toolbar is not float, going to float. It's going to stick right in that spot. If I click on it again and make it white, what happens is when I'm not using the, the uh, toolbar, let's say I bring my cursor over here, that, um, that toolbar will float away to the right and it just gets off of your instruction or your page. But if I move my cursor, or in the case of if you're standing at the board, you bring your pen over there, and if you hover over that um, toolbar, it will come back so you can grab a new tool. So again, if you move away from the toolbar, it floats away. But if you want it always to be there, just click on the push pin and it'll stick right in that spot. Lastly, you do not have to have your toolbar um, stuck to the right or um, dock to the right is what we call that. You can click on this menu option and you can put your toolbar wherever you want. So if you're a kindergarten teacher and you think it would be helpful to have that toolbox at the bottom, you can dock it on the bottom and that totally changes um, where your tools are. So if you click here and you decide, oh, I want to dock it on the right, you can do that. So that is really a personal profile preference that anybody can make depending on what works for you. Um, I talked about full screen mode. I talked about the Zoom menu. And the last thing is page notes. When you design a flip chart, especially if you're going to share it with another teacher or if you need a reminder for yourself from one year to the next, a lot of the times when you, when you get good at this, some things on the page are not going to be obvious. And so you might want to write yourself some page notes. If you see this icon at the top that looks like a yellow post-it note, that 
tells you that um, there's page notes that have been documented that are associated with this page only. If I click on this, you're going to notice the page browser will change to the notes browser. Watch this. If I click here, now you see my page notes. And I have made a lot of notes um, for you that when you download this flip chart, if you want to learn more about the software and the flip chart itself, um, I've written these notes for you to learn a little bit more or get a reminder or reinforcement about what I've taught you. So um, that is a basic overview of the layout of the software um, so that you have an understanding of things that we will go into in more depth in a little while. The next step is for you to um, really get an opportunity to um, get comfortable at the board and that's going to be fun so, um, so stay tuned for that.